Okay, Space Cadets, let's go to Saturn. This is something I haven't really looked at much before, but I was looking at Jupiter in relation to Saturn and some of the ancient texts and so forth. And it has these big rings and it has some anomalies like at the North Pole, which is this hexagon shape at the North Pole. Nobody can explain it. It's one of the biggest mysteries. Uh, it's a mystery. Heightening their mystery even more. They can look at it and they can look at it and they can see it, but they just can't know, they just don't know what to make of it. But it's a hexagon shape. Now, I've looked at it pretty care as carefully as I can, and they give you some pretty good details. But you see that? Look at that thing. Now, there are some things to take into account, there's little vortexes and so forth. Um, and and they give you some pretty good information about this. So anyway, let's get into it. All right, let's just look into this. This is Saturn. Now, you see the spinning core here? You see the outside and this hexagonal shape? They have no clue. Why is this doing this? What's, that? What's going on with that? What's the hexagon? Now, the, apparently they claim that the ancient Egyptians and all of them, they knew that this was a hexagon on the North Pole of Saturn. Now, what else did they say about Saturn in the ancient text? They, they call it Saturn Kronos, who was the ruler god of the Golden Age. He was the ruler god, Kronos, and it was the golden age, everything was fabulous, everything was great. And then he was attacked by Zeus, who was smaller than him. Saturn was a very, very big planet, apparently. And this is what was written, this is not my words. Jupiter attacked his father, Kronos. So Zeus attacked Kronos, because that's their name, Saturn, Kronos, Zeus. Jupiter. Now, when he did, he smashed them up into bits. So now, Saturn on its own is a smaller planet than Jupiter. But you've got all the rings of Saturn and all of this stuff here, I imagine, is debris that's in the spinning around in this vortex. Now, why is it creating this hexagonal shape? Let me explain that to you. All right. It, it's the only planet that has this much debris floating around its edges that creates this this disk that surrounds it. And I, I would imagine if you took all that stuff and compiled it back together and put it on the surface, you would be bigger than Jupiter. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but they have claimed that Jupiter was smaller than Kronos, but he still prevailed during this you know, what, when he took over. Okay, this gets real deep real quick, but Zeus, who is Jupiter, grew up as he was saved by his mother, so he wasn't eaten by his father, Kronos. So he grew up and he forced his father, Kronos, to disgorge his brothers and sisters, because he ate them all, and he would have eaten Zeus. But Zeus was brought, wrapped up and um, Kronos got a, a, a rock inside of swaddling cloth, ate it, and Zeus grew up and finally came back, and he waged war on Kronos and was victorious. After his defeat by Zeus, Kronos became, they don't know what happened to him actually, according to different versions of the story, either a prisoner in Tartarus or king in Elysium. Well, I can tell you what did happen to him as a physical planet. It became smashed to bits and now is the physical rings of Saturn, which now physically is a little smaller, I believe. Well, I know it's smaller than Jupiter now. At the time, I don't know whether it was smaller or larger, but he was the father. And Zeus grew up to be a very sizable creature. I mean, obviously, Jupiter's pretty sizable. Now, was it more, was it larger than the father, Kronos? I don't know. But I think they did mention that here and there, that 
he was not considered to be a match for Kronos, but he did persevere and, and destroyed Kronos in, the, in that attack and took over dominance as the god of this solar system. And then they went from there into the Bronze Age. Kronos was a golden age. Everything was great. I guess he was a good god. And then when Zeus came in, things changed. He was the sexual god. And he was in, um, you know, he came down with to Mount Olympus and they had literally sex parties and they, the, the offspring were giants and this is what led to the dis decision to clean the earth. And that's what the Great Flood was. And there was a lot of different creatures here, absolutely stunningly different, crazy, bizarre creatures. And um, they didn't all get wiped out, but most of them, most of the biggest ones. Okay, so they have literally no idea why they're getting this hexagon shape. Well, I'm pretty sure I understand why the hexagon shape is there. However, and here's why. The planet is spinning. All right, so the planet is spinning, and it's trying to plow through all these gases. And because you're right up here at the center of the vortex, it's spinning real fast up here, much, much, much fast. You know, in comparison, it's going almost a complete revolution where it just takes forever to go all the way around. So this is like the tip of a drill bit. Now, this is why you're getting this. This bump right here is coming because all this stuff is spinning this way. And watch it drag this stuff in. Watch it drag... Watch this drag this stuff in. See it dragging it in? And when it does, it hits this. That must be another. I'm not sure what's going on. Why? Whether that's just something sticking up there and it's hitting it like creating a venturi here. But it's spinning here. So this is coming, forcing this to spin. This goes backwards against this. So instead of this coming in and around as a round ball, it hits it and pushes it out to a little angular edge basically and then it tries to collapse and it gets pushed back out again they, they create these little spots and and this is the main driver of this activity as you see almost no interaction on the outside around here until you get close to where that ball is here and watch what happens down here everything starts getting dragged in see because of that ball Everything gets dragged in and then it gets forced and pushed out this way. Over here, it's just sort of laying around there. But once it sets up that shape, it just keeps going. Now, there's another one I think that's um, highlighted in color. I don't know if it'll make any difference. Let's take a quick look. Something you want to understand, though, is this is not the whole planet that that, that picture was. This is where the hex shape is so they were maybe coming out to about here where the, the ring is and you can see there's a very there's there's differences in the way the pattern set up depending upon the density of what's being pushed into and structures that are sticking up or not sticking up or spinning or not spinning they cause this like a hurricane now this is a little better Apparently, these are different colors which represent different intensities. Hold on one second. Let me look into that a second. All right. As I said before, I believe this is influencing and causing this to square up a bit, you know, cause this. Now, what are we seeing here? We're seeing a dipole. This is dipole flood theory. That white is only glowing white because it's being highly energized. All of this red stuff is, is glowing because it's, there's an energetic reaction going on there. But that one there is really glowing and it's interacting somehow with the core. And the core is black. That's black. It's surrounded by some glowy white red particles, whatever you want to call them. But if you really looked at this closely, you'll see that there's very, very clear separations in the, the pattern of the circles. And this, whatever it is, 
is coming, being pulled here, watch it. It's being pulled this way, right through this, which forces this to spin in this direction. Just pay attention to the details, watch. See, boom, 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 boom. It's, it's going around in a circle there. That's because this is pushing this in between it. It has to go that way. Right, it can't come this way because it's being pushed that way. So it goes circling this way. Now, is this fixed in this position? I don't know. I don't know what, what this is. I'd like to know what that is. Also, is the pattern here fixed to Saturn where it goes with Saturn on its rotation or does it can it flow? Is it moving around? I would think it would be fixed because I think I got an idea what's going on. But look at these very, you see these, how these patterns, you see the stripe in between here, the stripe in between here, look carefully. There, there's a, a, a radiation of stripes basically. Now I also think I understand why this is all dark here on the edge versus all the glowy stuff in here. Alright, and the reason I believe is this is where the dark matter is being pushed to. This is all the white matter which pushes against each other. It doesn't like each other. It glows. And the dark matter just stays out of the way. It's getting pushed out here. Now, what will that do? That sets up another pattern out here. You see that stripe right there? You see that blue one? You see that? That's an interaction of push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. It's like a magnetic field, only it's squared up a little bit. This, uh, I, I think I kind of understand a little bit what's going on here. And um, I, uh, I don't know totally what to think about it, but I do know this is spinning this way, dragging material through this way forcing this to spin this way, forcing this to make a bump right here. And the bump carries through. Uh, that, that's my interpretation of it. Could I be right? Could I be wrong? I don't know. Could you recreate this in fluid? I think you could. I think you could. If you had the same set of circumstances, and then you could increase or decrease the pressure of everything, and um, and put a pin here or something or a, a ball or something, you know, somebody could make a, a, an experiment maybe that would do this. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I got a lot of other things to do. But if, you know, they, they like doing that kind of stuff, well, I'll do it. But I'm going to tell you what, that's energy. There's not, nobody going to deny that. That's energetic reaction. All of this is energetic reaction. Why they're in these little globs? I don't know. There must be some kind of a a structure to this fluid. What that structure is, I don't know. But whenever you see glowing, it's energetic reaction. Something's pushing against something else, forcing a glow. That's the only time you get a glow is when they push against another thing. Then you get a glow. And that's being pushed against here. And then it's trying to push against this way, and that's pushing against it. So it's really glowing when it hits this. Now, I don't know what else to think about that, but that is Saturn's North Pole. You know, the color was good, but I just came back and I started looking at the black and white, and there's some other details you didn't see in the color. Now, again, this is where the, the dark is out here, but see, it's granular. You don't see that in the color shots. Now, the other thing you don't see in the color is this right here. You see this? Watch this thing get dragged in and pulled around the white. It's getting dragged in and pulled around. All of this white is getting pulled in between this like a, a venturi, like a vortex, a, a, a venturi, a slit. So this stuff is getting pushed into here, and this is where the bump occurs to create this, this angle, I believe.
and it follows through all the way around for some reason. I can't explain. But I do see all of these different lines. Now, in between here, there's a whole set of goop that doesn't spin real fast and create lines. It sort of follows, I imagine. But out here, these have pretty very distinct lines. Look at how, how very distinct those lines are. And in the middle, they're not distinct at all. They're just sort of globs floating around. But in the very center of the middle, they're very tight. Now this, I gotta be honest with you, this reminds me of what an atom might be similar to. But I can't account for that. I, 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 I have no idea other than the fact that I would think that the planet's spinning and there's gotta be a bunch of stuff in here just like it's got rings. So I imagine this is stuff. Whatever the stuff is, I don't know. Whether this is a ball or like a like a moonish thing that's real real close or whether it's just a bump sticking up that has to force its way through and 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 I, I just don't know but I can tell you this that is that's energy pushing and shoving that's about as far as close as I can get to it did the ancients know about this they claim they did that's what the, the experts are saying now. How did they know about this? How would they know? Well, they don't give the ancients any credit for anything, to be honest with you. They think they were just people digging in the dirt for stuff to eat. No, that's not at all correct. Those people were the ancients that were in charge, literally, of the universe. They thought when they were talking about gods and all this stuff, it's just silly. They weren't putting themselves above everybody else, calling themselves gods. No, there was gods here. They were, there was many gods, and each one of them had territory of a region and was that region's god. And they, they were just gigantic, absolutely gigantic, gigantic, huge creatures, and they could change themselves at will. As if you read Ovid, metamorphosis his first words are I intend to speak of entities changed into new forms meaning landscapes he says exactly what he says including violence where they become part of the landscape and he says they could transform themselves into anything they want fungus mushroom ants rivers planets and then into gods, which were, because they saw women look really hot, they could just change themselves into really good-looking gods. You don't see any dumpy-looking gods. They all came down looking hot and, and had parties of sex. And that's what he said, let's go down and take some wives and have a good time. And they did, but they, they didn't realize, apparently, that the DNA would not work. And it didn't, and that's when they created all these monsters and giants and freaks and all that stuff. And... And, and that had to be dealt with and it ended up being the great flood trying to wash it all out because there's nothing else could be done I, I, I pretty much understand the sequence of events now and I can understand why what else would you do you know anyway I'm going to just leave that for later